I'm going to show you tips and tricks to make dealing with biters in your factory way easier. Video have three main chapters, early game, mid game and late game, to make watching easier for you. It will be 30 tips because only 32% of people who watch my videos subscribe to the channel. So if you enjoy the video, leave us up, it's free and you can always unsubscribe. Wait a second, it's not 32%, it's 3. Factorio devs know how healthy are omega-3 fats, so they added the possibility of healing after eating fish. If you don't know, you can find fishes in water, and to make catching them easier, use red deconstruction net, it will stun them or something. It's a good idea to look around your factory and find small biter bases, because they are easy to take down in early game and they will send you a lot of attacks right to your unprotected base. You can use buildings like furnaces to block biters when they are angry at you. Trees also work fine when they are chasing you, just don't get blocked by yourself and everything will be fine, if you of course don't come across cliffs. Talking about cliffs, if you didn't disable them during world creation in terrain tab clicking at this little checkbox, you can use them as a defending tool, because biters can't cross it. Sometimes they are generated in a perfect way, making defending so easy. If these cliffs look too good for you, then you shouldn't look at this one. Ammunition is hard to get at this point of the game and feeding all of your turrets might be hard to do. To make it easier, use Z button. Just grab ammunition and click Z while hovering over a turret. Or in case you have even more turrets, press Z and move your mouse over all of them. Biters will only attack you if you trigger them with pollution. So you can regularly look at the map with pollution turn it on to predict future attacks. If you can't see any neighbors, install some raiders to stalk them efficient. Factorio is not America and you cannot buy bullets in Walmart. You have to produce them by yourself and sometimes you don't have enough to defend your factory. But don't worry, you can always use a pickaxe to serve democracy. Just come closer and smash a spacebar. If you think that somebody of your friends might be a biter traitor, use C button to hit him hard. To kill bigger bases in the first few hours of the game, use gun turrets in an offensive way. Grab few of them and place them in your neighbor houses. Put ammunition inside with trick from previous tip and expand your factory. You can open statistic graphs with P button and see how much pollution are you creating. What's more, you can look at left side where is consumption and if you see any base consuming pollution, that's mean you need more bullets, because attack is coming. At some point, we need to build a wall. And if your wall is thick, like this one, the easy way to open it without destroying anything is just using the construction planner to disconnect near walls and make easy passage. I mean, you can also gates, but let's be honest, who use gates in Factorio? After building a wall, next good thing to do is defending it with ammunition belt. Just place belt around your base and place turrets with inserters to make a powerful weapon. In this stage, you don't need much ammunition, so it's a good idea to keep bullets only on one side of the belt. You can also change distance between turrets after some time to increase your power. In Factorio, you can use multiple weapons at the same time. My favorite combo is submachine plus grenade. You can also support yourself with poison capsules to make clearing enemy bases even faster. If you are crazy enough, try slow capsule, but they are made for really mad people. In case you need to clear a very big base, but you are also not want to invest in expensive damage upgrade, all you need to do is just place flamethrowers and connect them to oil. They have huge range, what makes them a very powerful weapon. This tip is most useful for death wards, but even if you play on normal seat, keep this in mind, because you can end up with a lack of resources and expanding for new one will be easier in this way. And be careful with trees, because they are made from wood and mother of nature can backfire you in this way. I'm not sure if you knew that, but there is a different gun in your car than your hand submachine. Like you can see, stats at the car gun are a bit better, so you can deal more damage with your car weapon. It's more useful for multiplayer games where one person can come closer to destroy bases and second guy can cover him with gun mounted on the car. Also, flamethrower in a tank is a bit different, as demonstrated on your screen. Hand flamethrower looks like fuelet with liquid ammunition, because range is bigger and it stays on the ground. On the other hand, tank weapon shoots only in close range, and it looks like ammunition have less liquid physics and behave more like gas, but it's just my thoughts. Different worms have different range of fire, 
small worm 25 tiles, medium 30 tiles, big 38 and behemoth worms almost 50 tiles. But you can ask me why I'm sharing you this information. When the answer is simple, because rocket launcher have 36 tile of range, what makes it outrange small and medium worms. Also big worm range is only 2 tiles higher than rocket launcher, so you can feel safe to deal with it also. And behemoth worms might have higher range than you, but it doesn't matter when you have eco-friendly factory with green rockets. And talking about being eco-friendly, most of factory players hate trees, they burn them, use grenades, bullets, bots, poisons or stronger weapons like rockets. But you know what? Trees are very useful in your fight with biters, because they consume pollution and pollution causes your enemies to replicate, expand and evolve. So if you don't need to remove trees near your base, just keep them untouched and let them absorb your pollution. It sounds weird, but you can use mines in offensive way, by placing them inside your enemy houses. Like you can see, that's a lot of damage. It is an unusual way of fighting, but worth giving a try, because factory speedrunners use it to clear up bases. People who play with expansion turned on should always look for biters inside their factories, because when you miss few biters inside, after expanding your wall, you can end up with huge amount of new biters very close to your buildings, and I don't need to tell you how angry they can be with a little of pollution in their lungs. And talking about expanding your wall, after some time you should do it, by upgrading your ammunition belt and make it two-sided with this one-to-one -one balancer. You can also put filter on your splitter to replace old ammunition. If your defenses are still weak, try to improve them by placing a second layer of turrets. By the way, every turret will keep only 10 ammunition inside, so you don't need to worry about filling all of your turrets with 200 bullets at once. It's hard to defend connections to every single outpost in your megabase and sometimes might happen a unpleasant situation when biters decide to eat some of your power poles on their way. In this case, your outpost defended with probably laser turrets might become just empty hole in your heart. To prevent those sad moments, you should connect your mining facilities with multiple power lines. Of course, don't overdo it. The easiest way to defend your oil outpost is to just use oil. What a brilliant idea. I know it might sound too obvious, but many people don't use flamethrowers at all in their whole factories. So place where you dig oil will be the best place to start testing this type of weapon in defensive way. Sometimes your defenses are not enough to kill all biters before they did damage to your walls or turrets. So good idea is to keep few roboports placed in your outpost to provide repairing support after big attacks. Just place passive provider chests with walls, turrets, miners, power poles and many repair packs to give your bots supply. And also, don't forget to put good amount of construction bots in your roboports. I've shown you already a way to kill bases with normal turrets and flamethrowers, so it's time to use lasers. At this point you should have modular armor with good amount of robots inside. So just create a blueprint with laser turrets plus power poles and you can reclaim your land from those ugly worms. Worth to mention that this method is more efficient if you have research upgrades for faster robots and better laser damage. Also more roboports in your armor will be helpful. Using only one weapon to defend yourself is stupid idea. So to make your base indestructible, you have to mix your damage type by placing laser turrets and flamethrowers at the same time. Flamethrowers have huge range of fire, can work even without power and AoE damage is crucial in late game when biters attacks are huge in size. What's more, flamethrower turrets are very powerful because biters and spitters do not have fire resistance and total 3000 damage dealt to ignited enemies is guaranteed death centers for almost anything in the game. At least, this is what Wikipedia says. When size of your base is too big to easily travel around, you should think about backup power for your outpost. I've got this idea at Reddit from Damonka Fish aka Purple P. He told me that with steam stored in tanks, few power switches and overcomplicated circuit setup you can make perfect defense for your outpost. So this is a blueprint that he sent to me and based on it I've made my own design. I'm not sure if it's better but it works and all blueprints are in the description. Maybe this well described picture will explain you what is going on. So your base emitting one P signal on red cable. If your power line got destroyed, then switches with showed condition will change. 
and cut off your miners to provide all energy from backup source to laser turrets. It's complicated to explain it quick, so just look at the blueprints and figure it out on your own. By the way, I'm not sure if you knew that putting steam to tanks or train is a perfect way to store energy and like you can see, we are using this method to deliver steam to our outpost. Bigger biters causes bigger troubles, but you can exploit their size and build dotted walls in front of your main wall. It will confuse your enemies and make your turrets easier job to deal with them. Of course, don't overdo it, because dealing brain damage to your enemies is against Geneva Convention. At some point you have to expand your base even more, and I guess your modular armor grid usually looks like this. And it's a bit annoying to change all of your items inside every time you fight with new oil keepers. To make swapping armor easier, you can just craft few of them and keep them in your inventory. My usual combo is running armor for daily use and offensive armor for diplomatic talks. Remember to replace your armor without taking it off, because uh, yes, this can happen. Bonus tip, when you press most button on your inventory slot, it will make dedicated slot for your armor or wood. Ok, it's late game and you have Spidertron on your side. What items are the best for your little friend? I usually keep few batteries, fusion reactor and a lot of shield for fighting. And to support this setup, my power armor have huge amount of lasers, batteries and also reactors to power this up. I am a very defensive player and if you don't like the style of playing, just replace some of shield from your Spidertron with lasers or legs. If you can afford one Spidertron, you can also afford second one. To maximize your output damage, always keep your second spider with you. Of course, you can have more than one, but using them is a pain in neck. Also, be careful with red rockets, because AoE damage is not a toy. Button P will open you statistics window. We are interested in the last tab called kills. Here we can see how many Sons of the Biscuits have been converted to your factory progress. It is sad to see that native citizens of this planet are being poisoned with pollution and their houses was destroyed with nuclear weapon. And you know what is even more sad? You! Because according to YouTube statistics, 97% of people who watch my content don't subscribe. Change it with one click. And if you want more of my videos, on the right is playlist with more tips and tricks for Factorio. Plus, on the left is YouTube recommendation for you. Thank you for watching. Bye.